Guess what I'm working on? That's right, it's my third broken 18 year old diesel truck in three weeks. You can't make this stuff up. This is another 2005 Ford F-350. It's got the six liter power stroke. It's got an oil leak. I think it's the front main seal, but I'm not sure. We should be able to see because it's leaking a lot. I don't like lifting these big trucks. Looks like I was wrong. Well, it depends on how you want to look at it. So the front main seal, I think is leaking, at least a little bit, but typically they only leak when the engine's running. It shouldn't, shouldn't be dripping on the floor when it's just sitting here. So I thought it was coming from the front main seal and then, you know, air was just blowing it back along the oil pan and it was dripping off, but I think it's coming from somewhere up higher. Looks like maybe it's the valve cover gaskets. You can see it's been studded and deleted and turned up to 11, just like all these six liters. Yeah, so I think we need valve cover gaskets. What I'm worried about is those bolts being stripped out. You know, typical older diesel truck. It's had more work done than Joan Rivers and those valve covers have probably been off there a dozen times. Ran into that with a 2003. I guess we'll set it down and see if the bolts are stripped first. I'll tell you the real problem. I need to learn to say no, especially to diesels. They just, they take all the fun out of it. I mean, look at that thing. It's jammed underneath of the cowl. You can't even see the engine. All you can see is the pipes and wires and Plus he's got all these aftermarket doodads. There's a coolant filter and an extra oil filter and spaghetti hoses everywhere. We got this stupid cow pusher on the front. The rhubar. It's gotta be from Texas or Oklahoma or something. We don't use these up here. I pulled the under fender liner. It's not too bad to get them out. It's borderline impossible to get them back in. But that's a problem for future Wes. The good news is I put a wrench on the bolts I don't think the threads are stripped, at least not yet, and I'm pretty sure the leak is from the valve cover gaskets, at least one of the leaks. I don't know. It's possible that the, the uh, glow plug harness is also leaking. That's this plastic looking gizmo right here. It's another terrible design. So they go into the lower valve cover. There's an O-ring that seals them. Uh, in our area, it's impossible to get them back out. They get corroded above the O-ring and you pretty much always break them. Anyway, we're gonna do the valve cover gaskets. It's, uh, it's doable, it's not a fun job. Three and a half hours by the book. We gotta pull the charge air cooler tube, the air filter tubes, the coolant bottle, the FICM, the glow plug control module, probably some of these different hoses and bits and bobs. If you've done it before, you should be able to beat that time. If you haven't done it before, good luck. You're probably not going to get it in three and a half hours. Everybody always asks about this cordless ratchet. It's the Hercules from Harbor Freight. I don't know what to say about it. It's not fast. It's not particularly powerful. It sounds like a Soviet moped. But it works. It's been working fine for, I think, about a year and a half. Battery life is pretty good. I liked it enough that I bought the Hercules like nut driver to go with it. It's also about half the price of a Milwaukee. I really wonder what these guys think a coolant filter is going to do on an engine that doesn't have wet liners. I guess it can't really hurt anything.
So this is your PCB hose. There's an O-ring on there that likes to kind of disintegrate. Looks like this one's already gone. Somebody's put some epoxy or something on it. Silicone looks like. Pretty typical six liter power stroke stuff. I think most people would agree the right side is the harder side, so we're gonna start with that. Pull off this slow plug module. <laughs> yeah, who needs the other nut? What's going on here? Okay, there's the module. Now we gotta pull off the bracket. Looks like the pigtail for the ICP sensor has been replaced at some point. There's been a lot of hands on this old girl. It's good news for us though, since a lot of the bolts are missing. Okay, that was the easy ones. Okay, there's a nut that holds the transmission dipstick that we should be able to get on. Come on. All right, maybe if I reach down here with this little stubby wrench. Anyway, it's down there. Take my word for it. I've got all the bolts out except for the two that are down beside the heater box. You can get them from the top. It's not a lot of fun, but you can do it. But since we have the fender liner out, it should be pretty easy to get those from the bottom. Are we having fun yet? The left side's pretty easy comparatively. Just this ficum is in our way, the fuel injection control module. You gotta be a little bit careful. Oh, that's nice. It's supposed to be rubber bushings in there. They're long gone. Anyway, what I was saying is you gotta be careful not to break the little locking tabs on the connectors on the bottom side of the ficum. But she ain't no spring chicken. They're probably already broken. Man, ratchet down. I think I got the bolt slips. So the trick with these connectors is there's a locking tab on both sides. Yeah, so there's a locking tab there and a locking tab there. So you gotta squeeze it. There's three. The rest is pretty straightforward. Gotta pull these two brackets for the thickum. Don't mess with this thing here. That's the, the breather, the, the part of the PCV. The gasket set usually comes with new seals for that thing, but if it ain't broke, don't try to fix it. I'm no expert. But that might be a problem. That'll do it. It's not working like I think it should. That's a whole lot better. Believe it or not, this is a good thing. I mean, valve cover gaskets can leak for any number of reasons, but it's kind of nice to see, uh, you know, a smoking gun that we can we can point to as the cause of the problem. So what happened is these studs have a you know, they have a shoulder and a grommet. So you're supposed to stick this thing through. The shoulder goes all the way down to the top of the head. And then you tighten it against the shoulder. It squeezes the grommet. You get constant tension on your gasket. But what happened is they didn't get it centered and the shoulder caught the edge of the valve cover and deformed it. And then it was holding it up away from the gasket. I've got some new gaskets here. The blue from you know who. Yes, I know Motorcraft would be better, but these are what I could get today. They are the same. The heads are actually, what do they call that? 
Siamese or whatever. So like the left side head and the right side head are the same. They just put them on opposite directions. Okay, I got new grommets on all the studs and bolts. The trick is to remember where you put a stud and where you put a bolt. And I usually get it wrong the first time, end up having to redo a couple of them. If I was smarter, I would make myself a little map. But who's got time for that? Torque spec is 80 inch pounds. It's like nine Newton meters. It is not very tight. Yeah, I ran these down with the, the cordless ratchet and I over tightened them. So be careful. You don't want to strip the threads. Guess what? One of the bolts is stripped. I don't need to tell you which one. You already know. Of course, it's the one at the back. The one you can't reach, the one you can't even see. Man, I thought I was being so clever. I knew this could happen. It happened the last time I had the valve covers off one of these engines. That's why I pulled the right side fender liner and I physically checked the three hardest to reach bolts to make sure they weren't stripped before I even started this job. But I didn't check the left side. Man, it sucks. Well, there's only one thing we can do. We gotta put a helicoil in it. Yeah, I know you guys will tell me about various snake oil recipes with epoxy and whatnot. Maybe that works with large diameter fasteners that have very low loads, that are easily accessible, that are clean. Uh, it will not work here. I've tried it. The stripped bolt is way at the back, behind the breather, right up against the firewall. If possible, do not remove the valve cover to install the helicoil. Every time you take those valve cover bolts out, you're taking a risk of pulling the threads out with them. This thing's a ticking time bomb. The less we can touch it, the better. You will need an M6 helicoil kit, a stubby quarter inch drill bit, a light, a mirror, a set of ignition wrenches, a sacrificial M6 bolt, a bandage, and an adult beverage. Grind flats on the quarter inch drill bit. Turn the drill bit into the stripped hole with the tiny wrench. Do not drop the tiny wrench. Don't go crazy. You only have to drill deep enough to get the tap started. Turn the helicoil tap with the tiny wrench. It should chew through the soft aluminum pretty easily. Tap as deep as you can. Don't drop the tiny wrench. File the bolt to the shape of the installer tool. cannot use the installer tool. It's too long. Install the helicoil as deep as you can. It needs to be below the surface of the aluminum. Break off the tab at the bottom of the helicoil. This may require some ingenuity. Yes! Huh. Finally! Install the valve cover bolt. That's it. We did it. Treat injuries. Celebrate. Evaluate life choices. The montage makes it seem easy, but it took about three hours to install that helicoil. It's done. Let's never speak of it again.
No issues whatsoever on the right side. So we've got to put the thickum in. There's nothing wrong with it, but I'm pretty sure they're supposed to be rubber bushings. And they are, they are MIA. Maybe I'm wrong about that, because it's got the rubber bushings down here. Maybe it doesn't need them up here. I don't know, it's been too long since I worked on one of these. Anyway, we're almost done. I think that's pretty close. I know it's a real thin profile. It's gotta be better than RTV. Yeah, that's it. This is not the original elbow. Originally it would have bolted to this bracket and you know, been pretty solid, but this is part of that aftermarket air box that he's got. I saved the best for last. I don't know what kind of eight dimensional CAD program they use to design this fender liner, but they're impossible to install. It's like one of those MC Escher paintings where it looks like it should work, but then if you think about it, it just doesn't. Did they put the fender liner in before they dropped the body on at the factory? I, just, I have no idea. If I hadn't pulled it out myself, I would swear there's no way it'll go back in. Still have to get it behind the lip. Oh, God. Who designed this thing? Okay. That's in. Okay. That's in. Oh. That's it. I take it back. Even if you have done this job before, good luck doing it in three and a half hours. Now, maybe when they were new, but not in their current state. There's no way, especially if the threads are stripped. I mean, you could double or triple that time. I don't have a hard time imagining a valve cover gasket job being a $2,000 deal, which is crazy, but what else are you gonna do? It's, it's almost impossible to fix. Anyway, I checked the oil. It's kind of over full. So hopefully he just added a bunch of oil because it was leaking and it's not making oil as, as Hank Hamilton would say. If you work on trucks, get one of these top side creepers. They're fantastic. They'll save your back, they'll save your knees, they'll save the customer's plastic trim. There's two things I don't like about this one. These corners here are super sharp. I need to just grind a you know, kind of around on there. It'd be nice if it was just a, just a smidge wider between the rails. And then the steps, they're too far apart. It needs like twice as many steps. For some reason, every time I set it up, the step is just in the wrong spot. So I end up with my, my knees locked out and it's kind of uncomfortable. So I may make some modifications to this one, but overall, they're fantastic. Yeah. We're done. Let's kick this pig. Every single time. So the new thing is I have these evil flies and every time I try to talk to the camera, they just fly right in my face or sometimes I try to fly into my mouth. It's not very handy. Anyway, I don't think it's leaking. So I guess that means we're done. Don't know what to say. It's not, not a very fun job, especially not when the, when the bolts are all stripped out. I mentioned the last time we worked on a 6.0 that I thought they were just going to kind of 
fade away into oblivion. And I got a lot of comments from people saying that wherever they live, you can't throw a rock without hitting a six liter. And they see them all the time, they work on them all the time. So you guys tell me, is it just me or are you seeing these valve cover bolts being stripped out all the time? That's the last two that I've had the valve covers off have had stripped out bolts. And I don't know if it's a design flaw or what. I really think it's just the, these engines have had so much work done. You know, they might've had the valve covers off a dozen times and you know, aluminum has a fatigue life and yeah, they've obviously exceeded that. So th there's no easy way to fix it. I wonder if someone, you know, maybe like Astro or somebody could come up with some kind of a repair kit. I was almost thinking like if you just made a new, you know, valve cover bolt or valve cover stud that had like larger self-tapping threads that you could just run into that stripped out hole, then you wouldn't have to get in there with a tap and a drill and all that crap. The problem is you'd always have to put that same you know, repair bolt back into the same hole and most people aren't gonna know or pay attention to that. So I don't know, there's not really a good solution. Maybe if you have a good solution, type it out down in the comments. I'd like to like to hear it. Thanks for watching. Oh, sorry we're late on the video. I took one day off and we're still trying to catch up. It's just been a madhouse here. Oh yeah. It seems to be spinning. 